Today's top stories at NBR. Attitudes at power supplier Meridian harden. South Island Farmers Fund fishing boat camera firm recycling the fourth most used metal in the world. And there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, 100% subscriber funded and proudly brought to you by you, as is every story at nbr.co.nz. It's Wednesday, February 23rd. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. The Reserve Bank has increased the official cash rate from 0.75 to 1% and will start reducing its bond holdings through both bond maturities and managed sales. Its Monetary Policy Committee agreed that the bank should continue reducing monetary stimulus to help bring inflation down, which is now running at 5.9%. Reserve Bank Governor Adrian Orr blamed high inflation on the level of global economic activity and ongoing disruptions to supply chains. In a statement accompanying the Reserve Bank's first monetary policy statement of the year, Orr said that economic capacity pressures had continued to tighten, with employment now above its maximum sustainable level and a broad range of other economic indicators showing that the economy was performing above its current potential. Rio Tinto's repeated brinksmanship over the future of the TY Point aluminium smelter has hardened attitudes at power supplier Meridian, with Chief Executive Neil Barclay laying down several conditions for any new contract talks. This month, New Zealand Aluminium Smelters Chief Executive Chris Blinkerin said Rio does see a pathway for the power-hungry plant to continue operating beyond its planned closure in 2024, a reversal of the stance reached by the mining giant after a prolonged strategic review. In a presentation for Meridian's half-year result, the Gen Taylor's chief executive said the company was not averse to discussions on a new contract. However, Barclay made it clear NZAS would have some work to do to get a new deal across the line. Nelson-based surveillance IT firm Snap Group has long specialised in putting its high-tech cameras on fishing boats, but its new funders are South Island farmers, presumably wanting the same treatment for the cow shed. Joining the NBR's Dita Deboni was Snap Group CEO Chris Rodley. And being able to provide data back to, uh, to farmers about, um, about their process and then to work with uh, uh, producers and processors. Snap Group CEO Chris Rodley with Dita Deboni there. Analysts have questioned the value of Spark's cell tower assets in comparison to recent multiples seen in the sale of similar Australian asset portfolios, but the company's leadership has declined to comment on their expectations at this early stage. The NZX and ASX-listed telecommunications provider announced today, Wednesday, that it would be separating its passive tower assets into a wholly owned subsidiary company, Spark Tower Co., during the second half of the year and would investigate introducing third-party capital into the entity. The towers have a book value of around $100 million. Spark Finance Director Stefan Knight confirmed the book value of the passive tower assets to be around $100 million. But when pushed by Forsyth Bar analyst Aaron Ibbotson for further detail, he declined to share his view on how much they would theoretically cost to replace. NZX-listed Precinct Property is interested in going further down the fund management route, it says, after announcing a potentially $1 billion partnership with Singapore's investment arm. The partnership will see Singapore Sovereign Wealth Fund, GIC, acquire three Wellington and two Auckland assets from Precinct, worth around $590 million. The assets included are 12 Madden Street and 10 Madden Street in Auckland and Mayfair House, the Charles Ferguson Building and Defence House in Wellington. Precinct Chief Executive Scott Pritchard said the ability to go down a funds management route opened up when it internalised its management in a $215 million deal last year. Bronze component manufacturer A.W. Fraser has signed an off-take agreement with waste recycling tech company Zinc Covery that will kick into gear once the startup's pilot plant becomes operational next year. It will eventually mean that the Christchurch-based exporter, which earns about $80 million a year from supplying global industrial giants in North America, Germany and China, and is the country's second largest foundry, gets closer to its nirvana of using 100% recycled materials. The offtake agreement is the first for fellow Christchurch company Zinc Covery, a University of Canterbury spin-out started in 2019, 
by Associate Professor of Engineering Aaron Marshall and former student Jonathan Ring. Zinc is the fourth most used metal in the world, but unlike most recycled metals, recycled zinc has a higher carbon footprint than if it was mined. Zinc Covery is developing an alternative to the current carbon-intensive zinc recycling process through a novel low-temperature furnace technology. The full details of those stories and more are at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR, in his political column, Brent Edwards looks at the balancing act for politicians over the Wellington protests. And while CEOs are confident about their own company's prospects in the next 12 months, they're not as upbeat about the New Zealand economy generally, a survey from PwC shows. I'm Paul Brennan. Join me again from around lunchtime tomorrow for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then same time right here again from 5.30 for another NBR Today.